During the cold, at least it's cold for my California blood. I'm Christina Poncher and welcome to the special press conference for our ESPN triple header going down right here from Madison Square Garden on Saturday night, immediately following the 2019 Heisman Trophy presentation. It's going to be a fantastic night of boxing. Top Rank has always brought a good show, show here to Madison Square Garden and Saturday night will be no different. Before we get started, I'd like to give a quick thank you to our sponsors for this fight, a Geico Insurance and also Allegiant Airlines. So thank you for being a part of this spectacular promotion. And as you know, you see their faces on the posters behind me. Headlining Saturday night will be pound for pound great Terrence Bud Crawford. He will once again be defending his title, his WBO welterweight world title against mandatory challenger Igis Mean Machine Kavaleauskas. IBF lightweight world champion Richard Comey is set to defend his title for the second time against Brooklyn native Tiafimo the Takeover Lopez. And many feel that that many feel that, that will be the fight of the night. I know these guys are looking forward to putting on a show. And then in a 10 round featherweight special attraction, Irish sensation, and he's pretty much become a New York fan favorite, Michael McConlin will battle unbeaten Russian Vladimir Nikitin in a rematch of their highly anticipated, excuse me, highly controversial 2016 Olympic bout, which I'm sure Bob will get to uh, in a little bit. This great triple header, as I mentioned, is broadcasted on ESPN and ESPN Deportes starting at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Select tickets are available if you can get down here to the Madison Square Garden box office or online or by phone at Ticketmaster. Um, there's some tickets starting as low as under $100 for Saturday night. As always, we have a undercard streaming live for you. It is a stacked undercard on ESPN+. Plus. That's gonna get started at 5.45 p.m. and it features some really great talent, especially some great local talent here from the tri-state area. You have Julian Hammerhand Rodriguez, talented 140 pounder, uh, Brooklyn's own knockout artist, 14 and 0, 14 knockouts, Edgar Berlanga. Uh, host Sway Vargas is 15 and 1 from the Bronx. He's on this card as well. And also George Cambosis Jr. of Sydney, Australia is taking on former lightweight world champ, Mickey Bay. So Bob, before we get to talking about the triple header, um, as I mentioned, the undercard, I mean, you said this top to bottom is one of the best cards of the year. We've got a lot of young and local talent on the card. People should get here early come Saturday night. Why? Yeah, I mean, you know, boxing should be like other sports. People who are paying money for tickets to watch the event should come at the beginning. I mean, we have so many good fights that uh, people can watch streaming but if you're coming to the arena, come early. Come when the doors open so you can watch some of these great, great young men who will be fighting on the undercard. I mean, this is a pitch not for any more money from anybody, not buy tickets if you're not going to buy tickets, but if you bought tickets and you're going to buy tickets, watch the whole show. It's worthwhile. When you talk about the triple header that we've put in um, on the night of the Heisman, Tia Fimo's fought on that night before, um, it just brings a broader audience. And, and for these guys right here, I mean, like you said, there's no pitch to sell it because these are great matched fights, particularly the Comey and Tia Fimo Lopez fight. What are your thoughts on our triple header? Well, they're all good fights. They're all good fights. I mean, the uh, Tia Fimo, uh, Comey fight, uh, well, that... The bookmakers have made it a 50-50 fight. So that's obviously of great interest. And the other two fights are not walkovers. They're tough, tough matches. Uh, and, uh, I mean, Terrence is worth the price of admission by himself. He is, pound for pound, the best fighter in the world. And everybody will have an opportunity uh, to watch him fighting a very, very tough a Lithuanian in Kovaliskas who has fought for us for many years and is a tough, tough Eastern European fighter. Uh, Mick Conlon uh, gets his chance for revenge. You all know the story. When uh, most people uh, thought that he had won his fight in the Olympics uh, and uh, uh, Nikitin uh, was given the uh, the, the nod. Now they have a chance in uh, professional boxing uh, for a revenge, for a rematch. 
and that will be of interest to fans all over the world. Uh, so it's a great, great show. It really is. I'm very proud of it, as is everybody at top rank. Uh, and uh, it's great that we're doing an event like this uh, in the Big Apple. Before we get to talking to the fighters, I wanted to say happy belated birthday to you, Bob Aram. And what about Carl? Is I was going to say, and yes, today is Carl Moretti's birthday, our <laughs> vice president. So happy birthday, Carl. <laughs> you do so much for these guys. We appreciate you. You want to sing, Bob? You want to sing happy birthday to Carl? Happy birthday, Carl. I'm not going <laughs> to sing. I'm not a singer. No, no Sinatra no. voice going on. All right. We'll get to talking to the fighters now. And um, let's start with that uh, controversial bout. I mean, both of these guys, Bob, par probably part of the reason you signed also Nikitin was knowing that we wanted to make this rematch um, in the pros. It comes just three fights in for Vladimir Nikitin. And Igis, thank you for, for translating for Vladimir. Um, how important was it for him to take this fight knowing that although he won the controversial decision in Rio, does he feel like this is a good opportunity for him to kind of silence the doubters and silence the critics and move on from here, cementing his win? How important for you was this fight, knowing that you were confident that you won these two fights before him? до этого и сейчас как бы доказать это все в профессиональном ринге как это для тебя важно было Мне никому ничего доказывать не надо я выиграл те два боя и сейчас это чисто уже новая страница и это только бой для моей дальнейшей профессиональной карьеры I don't have to prove to anybody anything I won two bouts against him in the amateurs and right now this is just a, like a, another big step for my professional career yeah, what does it mean to him in only three professional fights in his fourth now to get to fight on a big stage and a big card like this here at Madison Square Garden? Что для тебя значит твой только четвертый профессиональный бой и боксировать на такой большой арене? Уже боксировал и прошлый раз здесь Мэдисон Сквер Гарден. Для меня это не то, как в плане того, то что это большой бой. Правда, я понимаю то, что это бой очень высоко может меня поднять в дальнейшем в плане карьеры. А так я настраиваюсь так же, как и на любой следующий бой. Uh, I already fought. My last fight was here at the Madison Square Garden. I've been in the arena. So uh, uh, I just, uh, I just uh, stepping in to, you know, to, 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 to my next steps into my professional career. So yeah, no difference, the magnitude of uh, this uh, yes, card for him. Know, he says I'm preparing he, for every single fight. Matter. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Lastly, um, what's it going to take for him to win Saturday night, kind of just put this storyline behind him and move on to the next chapter of his professional career? Как ты представляешь вот этот бой, как он, как он состоится, чтобы тебе пройти на следующий уже бой? Как ты составляешь протяжение вот этого боя? Как ты представляешь себе? В принципе, ну, мы готовы на все 10 раундов, но будем уже, нельзя так представить бой. Будем представлять субботу. Uh, I'm, I'm ready for 10 rounds and uh, we're just going to see what's going to happen in the ring. We're going to see what, what, we, what we're both going to bring into the ring. All right, we are going to see. That's the opening bout, him against uh, Michael Coleman. And Michael, you know, similar to what uh, your opponent said, you know, he really doesn't feel like he has anything to prove uh, or anything to back up from that Olympic bout. But for you, you have redemption on your shirt all week. It's kind of been the theme for you. Um, not because I, I don't feel like you feel like you have something to prove, but it's more about just, you know, kind of getting that redemption and then moving on. Is that correct? Exactly. That's, that's what it is. This is straight business for me. There's no personal or emotional attachment to it. Um, Vladimir, obviously, he beat me in 2013 when I moved up to Bond and Wit. 2016, he, he got the decision, but, and he knows deep down he needs to prove something because his career is always going to be remembered for you know, losing to me in the Olympics, so um, he's got to come and prove something Saturday night. I don't believe he will. I've prepared fully and I've, I've been training for 14 or 13 weeks for this camp, so um, I'm ready for anything Saturday night. It's, it's a long time, but that's because this fight was originally slated to happen with him back in August uh, in Falls Park, and then he tears his bicep and it gets moved to now, but look, now you get an opportunity to close out the year, close out this chapter in a place that's become like a second home to you in, in Madison Square Garden. What does it mean for you once again to, to be back here, especially for this chapter? Yeah, it's, 
Sorry, it's, it's very fitting for me to be boxing here, uh, having this rematch in, in in MSG. As you know, this is where I restarted my, my my boxing career after the Olympics, and this is where I'll close the chapter on the Olympics. And we'll get to put everything in the past, and we'll have to stop talking about them because I, I, I'm fed up of it. I just want to take care of business and, and move on. But I want to say thanks to Joel and, and Sal and Bill and, and, and Joanne for you know always looking after me when I'm here too. So after this, Bobby's like, no more middle fingers. He doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> he doesn't want to talk about it. Maybe, and maybe for Colin, that means this next year he moves on to getting an opportunity to become a contender and, and possibly fight for a world title and maybe fight again back in, in Ireland. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, obviously the, the second dream that uh, Mick had when uh, uh, we signed him is that he would be fighting for a world title uh, and hopefully... Uh, back in Belfast, and we're going to try to make that happen. We we can't obviously determine what happens in the ring. That's up to Mick. Uh, but uh, assuming that he does win, and uh, we're going to have him come back to New York for the St. Patrick's Day celebration, uh, and then uh, uh, on to a world title, uh, hopefully in Belfast. Sounds good, right? It sounds fantastic, but <laughs> first listen, things I'm, I'm, first. I'm fully you focused on Saturday night. Don't, yeah. don't, 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 I haven't underestimated Vladimir uh, Nikitin yeah. at all, so I'm focused there. All right, we're looking forward to it with your Rocky look today. Rocky Four, if you're all wondering, yes, it's Rocky Four. <laughs> when I'm in Russia, I'm fighting <laughs> the Russian, so you game on that, I have right? to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, not, not the suit today, huh? Um, now to our uh, first world title fight of the night. It will be the second fight on the ESPN broadcast on Saturday night. 12 rounds lightweight contest, the IBF world title. We'll start with the challenger, Tiafimo Lopez. I mean, we've covered your career prospect contender, now challenger, just 22 years old, 14 and 0, 11 knockouts, and you're days away from your first world title opportunity. I know it's a dream come true for you to first be in this position and fight here at you know, Madison Square Garden, if you could kind of put into words what these last few days have been like as you kind of have built up the anticipation for Saturday. How's everybody doing? Um, first and foremost, I want to thank God always uh, because without him, I wouldn't be able to go through this journey the way I did. And um, it's a blessing. It's a breathtaking moment. And it's something that I definitely got to sit back and, and just visualize and look at and just know that 22 years old, um, I have a great opportunity here to do a lot, you know, and um, I'm excited, man. And what better way to finish off the year than fighting in the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden, for my first world title in New York. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, this is, this is a moment right here. It's stuff that dreams are made of, for sure. And Turning my dreams into reality, that's the thing. I can understand that completely. Uh, you've had a lot of supporters, CVMO, but you've had a lot of critics and, and doubters as well more so coming out of the woodworks after your last fight, which, you know, you face a little bit of adversity, and it's like, oh, he is human. Oh, things do happen. Uh, what does Saturday night's fight uh, give you the chance to do? I think everybody needs something like that, you know, just to show, you know, um, I mean, I needed that. Everything happens for a reason. That's what I look at, and I take everything that they try to throw at me negative into positive. I turn that, you know, um, you can't face me. You can't bring me down. You know, I'm here for a reason. Um, Teofimo is doing what he's doing come Saturday night, like every night, you know. We're going to go out there and take over. I mean, everybody, I, I have vengeance in me. I'm holding all that, holding everything. I want to shut everybody up as best way I can. And that's just doing what I know what I can do best. You don't always predict knockouts in your fight, but your father does. Yeah. He has no problem saying it, and you have 11 of them in your 14 a fight career, so he's right most of the time. Uh, he said the same thing is going to happen come Saturday night. With all due respect to Richard Comey, he says this fight's not going the distance. Uh, with that being said, and, and I know you're constantly defending your father's words, but from your mouth, what is it going to take for you, uh, from you on Saturday night to hear the words and new IBF lightweight world champion? God didn't bring me to this point just for nothing, man. He ain't take me this far for nothing. I ain't come out here just to talk my smack and not back it up. I mean, uh, we're going to do what we have to do. Richard Comey is a two-time world champion for a reason, and we know that it's going to be a great and exciting fight. Everybody's definitely tuning into this one, along with the co with Mick Conlon and Nicotine, and also the main event. So, I mean, you got triple headers right here, and this is a great and exciting show, great fight, 
and come Saturday night, I mean, nine weeks in camp for a reason. Yeah. You know, we well prepared for this fight, mentally and physically. And I'm just excited, man. It's a blessing on blessing. Y para todos los hondureños, yo voy a ser el primero para ganar un título mundial. So I think to everybody in all the Latin, man, all, all the Latin people out there, man, tune in for sure. Tio Fimo, the takeover, man. I want to get everybody excited, man. <laughs> Why am I the only one excited? <laughs> it's cold. Why? <laughs> I guess he could be a promoter too one day, right? He, I don't need to say anything else about that. Just, just tune in. And um, before we get to uh, Richard Comey, I, I'd like to thank uh, Develop Promotions and Lou DeBella. I think I saw Lou here somewhere. Hey, Lou. <laughs> um, thank you for, for being a part of this promotion and, and for the champ uh, being, being uh, able to give Tifima Lopez a shot at this. And for you, Richard Comey, I mean, we talked earlier, 2019 has just been... A magical year for you. You burst on the scene in February in, in Frisco, Texas with a spectacular knockout. Then you go and defend the title, multiple knockdowns against former world champion Ray Beltran. Could you sum up what this last year has been like for you? Well, first of all, I just want to thank God for this, uh, for this very moment. I thank God for the life of everyone and for the life of all the media guys. And, you know, it is what it is. God brought us here for a reason. And I thank God 2019 has been a great year. I worked so hard coming from Ghana, you know how it is to get you this stage, man, just an amazing feeling. And you need to have God, you need to have a, a great spirit just to be where I am today. So I thank God and I thank all of you guys. I don't really know how it is coming from there, but I can only imagine everything that you've gone through to, to get you to this point. How has, where, you, where you've come from, how has the, the team that you have behind you uh, Uncle Dre over there um, helped motivate you and get you to be at the best point where you'll need to be against Tiafima Lopez on Saturday. Yeah, most definitely. You know, I, I always, I never underrate any boxer and, you know, I always train hard, you know. I just do my thing, you know, I just train, train and then listen to them and, you know, just live a simple life. I don't talk too much and just be me. That's it. You know about the history of boxing. You know about Madison Square Garden, the mecca of boxing. What does it mean for you to get to defend oh, your man. title here? I know I mean, you have a big smile on your face every time we talk about it. <laughs> yeah, Wes cannot even explain that. You know, how many boxers has come from Ghana to have a chance to fight in there? I mean, co main event, no. So, no, I thank God for this opportunity, man. And I thank uh, Top Rank and I thank everyone who's helped me to get this, this far. Man, God bless us and I'm ready to, def I mean, Retain my title, there's no way I'm going to let it go. No way. Matchmakers have it a 50-50 fight. Both guys also know the implications that are on the line if they win. I, I think a special guest is going to be in attendance watching these two uh, fight on, on Saturday night. His managers may be sitting right here in the front row. Yes, yeah, some young man who happens to have three of the lightweight titles and is looking to fight for a fourth will be on hand. Uh, he's coming in on Friday uh, to watch this match. Uh, Vasil Lomachenko uh, will be here and uh, a lot, a lot at stake uh, in this uh, Lopez fight with Comey. Uh, both great fighters. Uh, I didn't know Richard before this year, uh, but he is a tremendous, tremendous fighter, as is Teofimo. Uh, so there'll be one really interested onlooker, uh, and that's Lomachenko, who is coming in with his father. So they'll be here on Friday. Right. A lot on the line for both of these guys, and, and maybe none more so on the line than for the two fighters in our main event. <clears throat> I'm going to start now with the mandatory challenger, Igidius Mean Machine Kavalowskis. It took me a few years to get that right. Most of you can just call him Igidius. He's fine with that. Um, before we get to any questions, I just want to congratulate you on um, Igidius is going to be a father in February. He's expecting a little boy, so congratulations Thank to you, you your Thank first you. child. <laughs> um, talk about any extra motivation you may need to, uh, to get ready for a world title, but he, you and Marcos and the team have worked many, many years to get this chance. It's a, it's a chance of a lifetime for you, not only to fight for a world title, but against pound for pound, the best fighter in the world. What has kind of been going through your mind as you mentally prepare for this opportunity? So, hey everybody. Crawford was in my mindset already from June. We start training camp in June, so it was five, six months. 
So every day was just Crawford, Crawford, Crawford. So my mindset is good. I'm happy for this fight. When this fight we meet officially, I was super happy all day. I was all day smiling. My <laughs> job was just everywhere because I want to fight the best and we're fighting in the mecca of boxing. So it's double the enjoy. And when you say five, six months in training camp, everyone's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what I mean? But it's not necessarily like you've been sparring for five or six months to get ready. It take a little bit through your, your physical preparation. Yeah, so we, we, we're starting from June, but we're starting light. We, we don't push it a lot, but still all the tactics, everything was, was about how Crawford fights, how we, which stances. So, yeah, we, in sparring, we was having lots of guys, southpaws, orthodox, guys who switch stances. And the training camp was in different periods. There was speed, power, sparring, technique, tactic, all was in this five, six months. And I know when people probably look at your tape and they look at your highlight reel, they see a guy that comes forward, that's wild, he's aggressive, he gets cut sometimes in fights. I like it. You, you like it, I know. <laughs> so, um, but there's things that you and, and Marcos have worked on kind of to tighten, tighten up some of those things because you do have a great jab as well. You, you work well off the jab, you throw it a lot. I think 41% of your punches are jabs. So uh, just talk a little bit about technically what needs to happen in order to be Crawford. Yeah, going straight ahead to Crawford is not the option because he, he's too smart and he's showing all his last fights that he's smart and he's, he's, he's smart in the ring. So yeah, we'll, we work on, on my combinations and we, we don't want to go very wild at him. So that's it. I asked everybody else and I'll, I'll ask you as well, what would it, it mean for you to hear them say and new WBO welterweight champion of the world to your family, to Lithuania? This is the probably gonna be the biggest thing for my career, for all the Lithuanian boxing history because none of our champion was from Lithuania fighting. Even none of us was fighting for the championship. So yeah, this is, this is the biggest deal in my old boxing career. Thank you, Mean Machine, we're looking forward Thank to you. it. Thank you. Before, yeah. <laughs> be, oh, shit, Bo. Uh, all right, all right. Before, before, before. Sounded before, like my father. All right. <laughs> all right. Before uh, Christina uh, uh, introduces uh, the champion, I just want to, I looked around on the stage here. And look at look what a worldwide thing boxing is. Uh, we have a fighter here, a pride of Ireland, a fighter here, the pride of Russia, a fighter here, the pride of Ghana, a fighter here who was on the Olympic team from Honduras, and a fighter here from Lithuania. And now Christina will introduce the real American <laughs> from the Midwest, the town of Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, Terrence Bud Crawford. <laughs> all right, go ahead, clap for him. That's fine. He's the champ. He earned all that applause. <laughs> uh, Bud, for you, I mean, big smile on your face. Uh, you know everything that's on the line come Saturday night, but it's got to up the ante a little bit more when you're fighting in a main event, ESPN, a great card, and it's at Madison Square Garden. You fought here before, uh, but, but doesn't it mean a little something extra to you when you get to fight on this big stage, especially with the Heisman Trophy lead-in coming into your broadcast? Well, actually, you know, uh, I'm starting to get used to fighting on these big hey. stages, <laughs> you know, so it's really nothing new to me. Uh, this week is going to be a great, spectacular show from myself, I'm real well prepared for whatever uh, he brings to the table, and I'm pretty sure they know that as well. Uh, you talk about your preparation. Uh, obviously, w with Bo Mack, who hasn't been calling fights with me lately because he's been in camp with not only you, but Steven and Jamel and Rob and Mo and, and, and the whole team and, and Red Spikes and, and Saul. How is it just the bond between you guys and working out now with fellow world champs in, in sparring? You spar them, they spar. How has that helped to build you and prepare you for this moment? Nothing really changed with me and Bo Mack uh, or the team. Just iron sharp, sharp and iron. You know, uh, we added some more uh, great fighters to the team, but as well as, you know, um, we pushing each other each and every day in camp. If I'm tired, Mo would start talking, talking to me, come on, come on, little guy, you tired? And that just motivate each and every one of us to go that extra mile 
either we running, sparring, hitting the bag. Everything's a competition when we're in the camp. It seems like a lot of the interviews and lead up to this fight, everybody's asking you about another fight, another fighter, another promoter. But you're here against Igis Kavlauskas. He's your mandatory, and he's not a pushover, and he's undefeated. He's not someone that people should be looking past. Why should people quit thinking about what's ahead and focus on the task at hand right now? Because at the end of the day, this is, this is boxing. Anything can happen. Well, that's what I tell everybody. I'm not focused on no other opponent besides the opponent that's in front of me. My, my goal is to make sure I get the victory come this weekend. And that's the only person that I'm focused on right now. Anybody else is just talk. You know, it goes in one ear and out the other. I know he's a great opponent. He's hungry, he's determined, and I'm not taking him lightly by no means. All right, I'm going to leave you with the last word in terms of, you know, letting everybody know that's watching us on ESPN Plus right now and everyone else that has their phones out and everything. Why should they either get a ticket because there are still some tickets available and join us Saturday night or tune in on ESPN? Well, everybody should tune in. It's going to be a great uh, night of boxing. You got a lot of great fights this weekend, you know, starting with the rematch of oh, the rematch. You know, this is the third time these guys fighting, you know, so they got a little black, bad blood going on. Uh, Kome and Tio Fimo, that's a firework fight. You know, uh, Kome might be dancing a little bit if he win again. <laughs> they know, both know uh, how to dance. <laughs> Tio Fimo might be like a dance the, hall. Hitting, yeah, right. hitting the gainers, <laughs> flipping all over the place. Right. You know, um, I know that. I know that fight is going to be an uh, exciting fight. I know both of them. I watched them. I know it's going to be a spectacular fight, and I'm looking forward to it myself. And you got the main event. You got somebody that's hungry, determined, motivated. Like you said, he's been training for me since June. You know, uh, we've been training as well. We never out of shape. We never out the gym, as you can see. Uh, and I'm looking to go in there and seek and destroy. That's why you should come out, get there early, and support the uh, car this weekend. Anything else you'd like to say, boss, before uh, I give the know, ticket information? I've, I've had a lot of fighters who end up promoters, right? That's what I'm saying. This uh, guy Oscar down here. Oscar Floyd, uh, he's the next one. <laughs> Not yet, though. <laughs> you don't want you to go Not in yet. there. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. The weigh-ins are going to take place on Friday. They're going to be broadcasted live on ESPN. That's going to happen at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. And then on Saturday night, doors will open here at Madison Square Garden at 5.30 p.m. And the first bell will be at 5.45, streaming live on ESPN+. Plus. Also, Bob, um, we do have a press conference on Thursday for Select, or excuse me, on Saturday for Select Media to announce our um, January, February schedule. So you want to invite all, everyone to come in at 4.30, I believe? Pati pati yeah, particularly, particularly there'll be an announcement. Uh, first, Don't say uh, it yet, though. The card, we have two fights shows in January. And then February, we have one in China on this fantastic island, Hainan Island, Haikau. Uh, great, unbelievable place. Brad Jacobs and I visited it a couple of months ago. And we're making a, uh, a special price for all press people, uh, which, of course, doesn't pay for the, the, the airfare and for the hotels and the meals. But we have a special price of $400 for the press uh, that, because uh, uh, we want to get as many press people, media people, Oh, uh, out there to China as we can. So you'll speak to Evan and he'll have a further announcement about it on uh, 4.30 on Saturday at the special meeting. Right, and all the fighters um, for those fights that we'll be announcing will be in attendance as well for media availability. So again, thank you everybody for joining us here today. Thank you to all the fighters for being here and for your time. For Bob Aram, Top Rank Promotions, I'm Christina Poncher. We'll see you Friday. Thanks. Drop the mic. Drop the mic.